Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I am your host, Alexander Frost, and this is Episode 1. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is the first to introduce the Metroidvania style of gameplay. The whole exploring a castle, backtracking, and all that good stuff. It revolutionized it. It's what made it what it is today. Not to mention, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is the first Castlevania game that got me into the series properly as a whole. And so, to pay homage to it, on this, its 20th anniversary, I'll admit that it was kind of pure chance, I didn't even realize it had been 20 years, I'm going to play it. And I'm going to play it the way I want to play it. I'm not going to worry about trying to do the most efficient runs, I'm not going to worry about trying to... To, to, to find everything. I'm just going to play it, and I'm just going to have fun with it. I mean, I'm going to go for the best ending, because that's the way I play the game and enjoy it, but I'm not going to worry if I don't find everything, yet, you know, in the right order or anything, and, I mean, that's what, uh, you know, fast-forward editing tricks are for and whatnot, right? <laughs> so with that said, let's begin. Uh, first of all, we have File Select, Name Change, File Copy, and File Delete, which lets us, well, as you would guess, select the file we want to use, change the name, copy the file if we want to copy it to another memory card, or delete it. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this is actually the third time I have tried to start this series off. First time, I tried to do the PSP version using an emulator, but it kept getting kind of wonky. That's the version I wanted to do, because it was the remake, it had the redid voice acting, it had the fight against Maria, it had some extras that I really, really wanted to show off. But I figured, if I was going to be using an emulator which could possibly crash and cause issues, then it might be better if I just play the original version on a console. Guaranteed not to screw up. And then I started doing it, as you can see here, got 30 minutes in, level 6, and for some stupid reason my brain said, hey, why don't you just go ahead and do post-commentary, that way you can just start recording stuff in huge batches, and then you can come back and do editing on it later, yada yada yada, and then, I just, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea, um, I, I think it was like 2 o'clock in the morning when I came up with that idea, so we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. I'm going to start from the beginning, I'm going to do commentary as I play the game for good or ill. God help me, what am I doing with my life? I guess the other advantage is that if I had decided to play this and do post-commentary, then I would be able to play the game without listening to it without, on a delay. On an audio delay, I should say, but hey, who cares about all that stuff? Let's, let's just get on with it. I still can't believe it's been 20 years since this game came out. It was just honest, pure chance. I was not expecting. Also, in the intro that's coming up, you could see the bridge down there, and then it leads up to Castlevania's, to, to Dracula's Tower. If you look at the in-game map, you'll think, wait a minute, the shape of the tower and the castle was completely wrong. In actuality, it is completely accurate. Because what you're not seeing is how quickly Alucard is covering the distance on the bridge. So what's going to happen is... Yes, I know I'm talking over the cutscene. Deal with it. If you haven't seen it by now, it's been 20 years. There's no excuse. So what you're about to see is Alucard is going to be in the forest on the edge of the lake. Correction, I have to fight Dracula as Richter first. I'm gonna shut my face hole and go do it. Now, if you do play as Richter, you've got, you know, the classic whip. You can flail it around if you hold the button. But you have some moves that you didn't have in Rondo of Blood. So if you uh, press down, up, and then jump real quick, this handy dandy whip thing. Double tap X. I said double tap. 
you get a double jump. You can actually get a slide, which is neat. You also have a slide kick if you press the button repeatedly. And finally, by pressing up, down, down, forward, forward, and attack, you get a handy slide maneuver, which you can use while you're in the air. I will be making liberal use of this move. Hidden buttons everywhere. Sub weapons everywhere. Bad jumps everywhere! Here's what I don't understand, though. Well, this feels weird not being able to listen to the sound effects in real time. Here's what I... what's weird. There are all these weapons here. The Firebrand, the Dark Shield, and all that. All these weapons are here. The Moon Rod. What are they here for? What is the purpose? Better question. Does breaking these weapons out of their containment and taking them now affect their placement later in the game? I don't know. Like I said, I know where stuff is, but I couldn't tell you what everything is off the top of my head. Usually it's more to the effect of, I know there's an item here, but I don't know what item it is. So I'll wander to a spot and be like, gosh, I sure hope this is something I can use. Oh look, it's a sheet hilt. It's not useful. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Well, come on and get it then, son. First things first, though, I need the holy water. Yeah, this ability makes dealing with Dracula stupid easy. Because all you gotta do... Is, oh, shit. Really? Okay, normally it would if he doesn't decide to put himself in a corner. There we go. Because instead of having to deal with this onslaught, you can actually get behind him and hit him twice. Plus, this ability does a pretty fair amount of damage. I can never get more than two hits in on him, but hey, it works. The thing is, be careful. If you jump, if you move, if you do the move too soon, here, I'll show you what I mean. It'll change his direction. Uh -oh. And this form is arguably even easier. Dangerous, but easier. Come on. Bad touch. Bad touch. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I could get through that. Number one! <laughs> it's my favorite thing to do is to to use Hydro Storm right then and there just for that purpose. It was Richter Belmont, the legendary vampire hunter who succeeded in finally ending the menace of Count Dracula, Lord of the Vampires, who had been brought back from the grave by the Dark Priest Shaft. However, one night four years later, under the glare of a full moon, Richter mysteriously vanished. With no idea of where to begin her search, Maria Renard set out to look for him. It was then that fate intervened. Castlevania, the castle of Lord Dracula, which is rumored to appear once every century, suddenly materialized from out of the mist as if to show her the way. Meanwhile, powerful forces were struggling for the soul of a man named Alucard. The very same Alucard who had teamed up with Trevor Belmont to battle his immortal father, Count Vlad Tepes Dracula. Alucard, in order to purge the world of his own cursed bloodline, had submerged his vampiric powers and entered into what was supposed to be an eternal slumber. 
but now he is awake and aware of the evil once again at work in his homeland. The time has come once again for the forces of good and evil to engage in their ancient battle. Dracula's castle beckons for you, and no man can say who shall emerge victorious. Now, as I was saying before, what you're about to witness is a feat of Alucard's vampiric speed. He is going to move in this scene through the forest on the edge of the lake. And he's going to go from one screen to the next, literally covering the distance of the entire bridge in one screen in a matter of a moment. Here we go. Edge of the water. All the way across the bridge into the courtyard. That fast. Damn. I should also mention, right here... Down there is a hidden save room. However, it has been programmed out of the game. It is glitched. There is no way to get there without using a glitch, really. Uh, something called a heart refresh item and a duplicator, which allows you to use it repeatedly. You have to, like, glitch yourself down there. And if you manage to, you pretty much break the game. And not in a good way. So, a uh, quick overview of the controls. Attack is square and circle in this case. And that will depend on what items you have equipped. So in this case, I can square must be swing my sword. Circle must be bring up my shield. Jump is X, of course. Y is... I'm sorry. Triangle is a back dash, which is an interesting ability. You move around, up, down, left, right. You can look up. Duck. Pretty simple. Attack in the air. Angle your attacks. Right now, the shoulder buttons do nothing. Pressing start brings you to your inventory and all that. Pressing select opens up the map. And uh, that's about it. Uh, let's see, health, MP, hearts, you have hearts that you can use for sub-weapons, uh, attack, how much attack power I have, blah de blah de blah de blah it's all pretty simple. I mean, once again, it's been 20 years, so you guys should, you guys should have this stuff. Oh, let's see, the Alucard Sword, Shield, the Dragon Helm, the Alucard Mail, the Twilight Cloak, and the Necklace of, what does that do? No, nope, just adds defense, that's all, just, just gives you, just, just defense, that's all. Now, you do have magic, which you can use by performing certain input moves. So, just like with uh, Richter's um, up, down, down, forward, yada, yada, you can perform the same fireball move that Dracula does, and even use it to teleport around. Same fashion and everything. If you hold up while you're doing it, you'll perform that big comet-style ball that he throws that can't be destroyed. I, I like it a lot. I like it. I like it a lot. I should also note that some swords will have magic attacks. Some, if I, I can get this to work. There you go. Uh, I did down, down, forward, forward, and attack. There you go. I'm having a little trouble pulling it off, though. Kind of, thumbs kind of hurt. And you're probably wondering why I haven't attacked any of those candles yet. The reason is, for some reason, Richter and every other main ow, every other main character in the Castlevania series has the ability to gain items from these candles, no problem. For some reason, Alucard does not. He requires a special relic. I don't know why. Now, I'm gonna warn you right now, guys. Something that I prefer to do every time I play the game, and I do mean every single time, without fail, is to go down below fight these fishmen for about, I don't know, until I hit level 7, roughly. Now, I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna take a long time. So we'll just fast forward through all of it. And the main reason I'm choosing to do it now is because I'm using the Alucard Sword, which gives me a much higher attack power. Pretty soon I'm not gonna have any of these lovely, lovely weapons. So, it makes more sense to do this little bit of grinding early, as opposed to later. So also give me time to explain uh, the experience system in this game. Experience works in a pretty simple manner, as in all RPGs. Enemies are worth a certain amount of experience. As you get stronger, the same enemies will become worth less and less experience until eventually they are worth 
a paltry one point. So yeah, eventually fighting these guys is going to be worthless. So now that I have explained that, I'm going to go on ahead and fast forward, so I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, welcome back. Made it to level 7, and uh, I forgot to mention this before. A couple things I forgot to mention. One of them is that um, being a vampire, or even a half-vampire, water hurts Alucard something fierce. So falling into the water down there with the fishmen would have been not fatal, but it would have hurt. And considering the fact that Alucard suffers from Richter knockback, from Castlevania knockback, all those enemies in the water would have hit me, knocked me back, and I would have continued to take damage from the water, so it would have been almost certain death. Another thing I forgot to mention was, when fighting Dracula in the very beginning, let's go ahead and move on, um, your starting stats as Alucard will change depending on how well you do in the fight. Like, it's a fight you're always meant to win, so like, if you lose all of your health, Maria will suddenly show up, restore your health to full and give you her magic powers, making you invincible and allowing you to pretty handily destroy Dracula. But it will affect Alucard's starting stats. So if you don't require Maria's help and you don't use sub-items or item crashes like, you know, the, the Hydra Storm and all that, you should get some pretty decent stats. I don't know exactly what the numbers are because usually I do so bad, I need Maria's help anyways. But I think I've affected my luck stat in some way, because to be perfectly honest, while fighting the Fishman, I got three Zircon Rings and a Monster Vial. Usually, I don't get any items from them. So I'm pretty sure my luck has been affected somehow. Not sure how, though. I'll have to look up the stats next time, and I'll let you know. Alucard, what is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. What? <laughs> What the fuck are too much stuff? So yes, as you can see now, we have nothing. I mean, we started the game with a pot roast. No, we didn't even have the pot roast, I think. We started the game with a neutron bomb, at least, so we've got that. I don't know why we have a new... I don't... Okay, whatever. But we could still attack, and, you know, I've got the Zircon Rings, which do nothing. I mean, I can equip them, but they literally will do me no... no good. Like... No good at all. 
Um, also, I should have explained, the magic system, the way it works is when you have enough MP to use a spell and you perform the input, you'll learn the spell permanently. So I learned Fireball while I was trying to kill enemies down there that the fish, I ended up learning Summon Spirit, which was completely unintentional. So I can summon spirits now. And it's not really that exciting. It's back forward, but, uh... Ooh, it's not that, it's not that impressive. But now that I don't have a sword, all I can do is punch with my fists. My fisty face. Punch, punch, punch. Punch, 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 punch. Not that impressive punch. But... If you press down and in the direction you're facing at the peak of your jump, you get a fancy little down kick. Which is kind of nice. You know, I like it. First secret! A heart max up. This will increase the amount of hearts I can carry as sub weapons. So yeah, it increases it by like, I think, 5 or 10? Uh, I don't know. Uh, sub weapons are not really the most important thing to me here. I usually forget I even use them. But I, I don't use them all that much. I, I just don't use them all that much, so. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna get our first weapon. Give me a weapon! Short sword. That's not the right button. It's a short sword. It's a sword of shorty goodness. No magic attacks here, my friends. But, in addition, we also get the Red Rust, which is a two-handed sword, which is actually weaker, so not that impressive, but it's a rusty sword, so it stands a chance of getting stuck in the scabbard every time you swing. There's only one fight where I can think of where it can really be useful, maybe two, but generally speaking, I'll go for power over utility. Also, I just realized my starting defense is 1. Usually, it's 0, so I'm definitely sure that my stats were affected somehow, thanks to my, uh... Huh, thanks to that, uh, performance I did. Well, I will look it up between videos and let you know. Before we move on, though, it's time to save the game. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.